hey guys a long time no see um i started videos on this um i started videos and um i changed my mind i wasn't gonna finish it i got you know discouraged and i was like you know what too many videos too much time whatever it is what it is but i am actually being called to finish so I'm gonna finish i don't want to i don't want to do a bunch of videos anymore um i think the last part i left off with was um that i had twins in my stomach and i didn't know who, i figured they were you know my baby dads but um they ended up being a distraction and the only reason why i even knew that is because after i did have the twins um my kid's father um well he would bring them bring them over to his um his wife's house because you know he's still married even to this day um she would say slick stuff like they don't even look like you and blah 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 and then his mom started getting his ears so i was like okay let me take the maternity the paternity test the maternity test and and, and it is what it is and I did. I ordered the test through Mel, and he was like, "I believe you because you were so fast to get it." You know, if it, if it, honestly, it wasn't even that I was lying. It was honestly, I just didn't know. I was so confused. So I got it, and I was just like, "Whatever, let's just get it over with." And we did the test, and they weren't his. It was devastating because it was it was dramatic for him. But um, we did the test, and I told him, and um, he lost it. Um, he he was in his 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 emotions, and he took off for like a couple of days. He couldn't even look at me in my face. I felt so so bad. Like when we would get in arguments, and I would be like, "What sacrifice have you made for me?" He would be like, "The twins." How the fuck is that a sacrifice? You either gonna be in their life or you not. Period. But it's a fault for that when he said it. I would be like, oh, that is true. But you throwing them in my face every single time. But you throwing them in my face every single time. That's not gonna work. But um. But yeah, so fast forward, yada yada yada. Um, he he eventually came back after he got out of his bag, out of, out of his emotions, and I did tell my twins a father that they were his and he said he was going through some ish you guys i just never had a pregnancy where the guy was just there with me the entire time like catering to me going to doctor's appointments with me i just did it all on my own i don't even know what it feels like to actually have that real man beside me like with the appointments and stuff um but anyway I'm not trying to go off topic. Um, so that happened. And um, he came back and he was like, what I don't want to do is I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, you know, have them continue to call me dad and be in their lives. If he just going to randomly come back and then you just going to allow him to come back in. Mind you, I was young. And I was like, he's not coming back. And if he does, I'll definitely stop him. Not knowing then that that would be some really jacked up shit if I actually did prevent their biological father from trying to spend time with them. It would be so jacked up on so many levels. And coming from him, he should have known that he is older than me. He should already know this. But he didn't care. What he was thinking in his head was, I don't want another nigga around so that it could be competition for me. Not thinking about the kids. So, um... I agreed. Um, fast forward later, I was still in the same cycle, repeated cycle with him. You know, where he would be over here, then he would go over there, then he would be over here, then he would go over there. Oh, one day, I want to say he was gone for like two weeks straight. And um, the twins were like, twins are like three right now or four. And he just hit there. The twins' father hits me up out of the blue, and he's like, "Hey, I, I want to know if we can sit down and talk. I want to talk about the twins. I want to see if we can have a conversation." 
I'm so beyond stressful, you know what I mean? Dealing with my kids' father on a regular basis, being in and out. I was like, okay, I'll sit down and have a conversation with you. I don't... I really... I just put on child support and kept it moving. Um, I really don't know if he came back to get off of that. Honestly, I can't talk for him. I just know what my kid's father tried to put in my head. He was like, he only wants to be taken off of child support and yada, yada, yada. But, um little um do y'all know is that when he first when we first have kids actually i told you guys when i first had my first daughter um he came to me he was like my kid's father the one that i was my ex he came to me and he was like i gotta stop seeing her for a while because um i gotta give my wife some time so he missed some some i'm not gonna say years but he missed some time with, with my baby, too. And um, when he came back, there was no hold. <laughs> there was no, nah, you can't see it because you left out for some months and you missed her moments. I just let him back in. So when when my kid's father came into play and he's like, hey, I want to you know, sit down and have a conversation with you. I'm going to give him that respect. The same time, the same thing I gave him, my, my kid's father, I'm going to give the distraction uh, um, some respect. And I, and I call him distraction, you guys, is because me and him, we've never had a relationship. It was always just, you know, that. We didn't get to know each other. It was none of that. I just, I just needed my kid's father out of my head. And it ended up turning more serious than I thought. So that's why I called him a distraction because he definitely was a distraction. But we just never had that time to get each, get to know each other and to go on dates and to actually be with each other because it was so fast. You know, the moment my kid's father knew he was in the picture, the moment he tried to get him out of the picture. So anyway, I sat down and had a date with him. Well, not date. I'm sorry. I sat down with him and heard him out. And he said he wanted to be a part of the twins' lives and he wanted to come back in. And I said, okay. We'll see how it goes. And I did take him off child support because I feel like as a mother, um, if you're going to come to me, you're telling me that you're going to do what you're supposed to do as a father, I'm going to give you that chance. And if it's a second chance, I think everyone deserves a second chance. It takes you messing up that second chance to mess me over to be like, all right, I see what type of vibe you're on. Let me go back to the child support office. So, Yeah. Um, I took him off child support, and to this day, he's here. He's she's still in his twin's life. Um, but um, I can't um, I cannot co-parent in peace uh, without it being an issue with um, my kid's father. So um, that's that. That's another topic. <laughs> He, he just wants him to disappear. He doesn't think it's fair that he missed so many years. He could just walk back in their lives like he did. But um, um, I guess because he did it longer, the distraction did it longer, it makes it not fair. I don't know, y'all. Make it make sense. Oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah, so I can't. I don't, I don't co-parent in peace. Uh, let alone he can't even pull up to the house to get his kids because he's like I don't want him in front of my house you go to your mom's house and meet him so for a minute I was doing that I was I was meeting him at my mom's house is it fair no because he's able to co-parent in peace you know he goes to his wife's house and sit down and get all comfortable and but the moment I want to bring my kid's baby father to the house is a problem anyway nevertheless i'm sorry y'all my mind is everywhere like literally i didn't i didn't even want to finish but i think i i owe it to myself to to finish um you guys it's seven o'clock in the morning i'm really like nobody better not be up up there they better all be asleep my kids But anyway, um, 
What was I saying? Uh, to skip a long story, you guys, I was in a 13 year relationship and um, I was manipulated and lied to countless, countless of times. Um, when I started dating someone, I was like, 30 something in their late 30s I was in my early 20s um I seriously didn't know any better my childhood was horrible um you know I I longed for that for me to give my kids what I didn't have when I was younger um, which was that father figure um uh, I longed so bad that I put my feelings to the side um and I was in competition with his wife the entire 13 years of the, of the relationship. Um, I did things that I didn't want to do. Um, I tried to please him as much as I could to prevent him from wanting to go back over to his wife. Um, um, I did things um, that I wouldn't want to do. Um, I just did it because I wanted to make him happy. My whole agenda was to make him happy. Keep him happy. He'll stay. He won't leave. Um, I almost let him control um, my parenting, my co-parent situation with my other kid's dad. But um, I've experienced it when I was a child. I felt like, you know, my, my dad was kept from me um, out of jealousy. Um, for my, my mom's husband and I was like that's not gonna happen I'm not allowing it because you know what I mean he could come over to your wife's house with you and, and they could be like yeah, that's not your father but if he actually go with his actual dad he won't ever have to hear that in his life why would I take that from him why would I take that from them but um long story short you guys um it was 13 years and one day I just woke up and my feelings just wasn't there. I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled. Like I, like even the sex was different. And I guess it grew over time, but as it was growing over time, it got bigger so big that you're just numb and you guys the fucked up part about it is that you ask me what's wrong or what can you do honestly let me back up because the thing that topped it off was that um he doesn't he doesn't respect me as a person you know, when I'm serious, you're laughing. It's not fucking funny. Um, I think I, I, I helped him with rent before. And, and it's plenty of times when he helps me with rent. It was just this, this time that I helped you. I didn't have anything. I literally gave you my last. And I asked you, when were you going to give it back? And you laughed in my face like it was funny. Like I was joking. So, I took all my shit out of the bedroom and I put it into my son's room and I put my son into the room with his siblings and he was like you're being so dramatic you're not gonna be able to pick up that heavy ass bed and my bed is fucking heavy um but I was like I'm not <laughs> and I did I'm like I don't go to the gym every single day for no reason <laughs> I don't go to weight training for nothing mm -hmm. And I've been in that room since and I came downstairs and I was going to watch a movie with my kids and um, the 75 inch green TV was gone and I was like, and I asked my daughter and I said, where's the TV? Oh, um, dad took it to his wife's house. Well, she didn't say his wife. She said her name, but I'm saying wife. And I'm like, this motherfucker you know why he did that though because i took my bed my king bed out of the room that i bought 
with my money. Now, granted, he did buy that 75 inch screen TV with his money, but not only did you pull it because you were being petty as fuck because you was trying to get me back, but the kids got burned in the process because not only did you take that TV over to your wife's house, you took all my kids over to your wife's house to watch their TV in her fucking living room. How disrespectful is that? And then to this day when I go up to him, do you know what he says? Oh, the TV couldn't fit above the fireplace, so I didn't want to put it up. Y'all, I went and got myself a 75-inch screen TV, and I put it exactly where he said it wouldn't fit. Let me show you. Y'all see that? If I can zoom, I would, but he said that that 75 inch wouldn't fit above that fireplace. I went and bought me a 75 inch screen TV and I went and hired me some men and they came into my house and they installed it for me. So right now, that just topped it off. I'm like, all this time I've been dealing with the bullshit. Like you've been telling me you was gonna get a divorce, you never did. Um, to the point where you lied and said that you actually got a divorce and faked the documents. And then when I even asked him, well, why did you fake those documents? I just gave you what you asked for. From day one, you, you, you lied that you were married. You lied that you had kids. You lied that you were going to get a divorce. You lied that you actually did get a divorce. Um, you lied about the TV. Like... At this point, it's a pattern that you've been showing me. And if and if I don't know better now, then I'm never going to learn my lesson. Like, I'm, I'm constantly in this repeated cycle. I'm constantly feeling like I have to compete with this other person. Like, it's way too much stress. And at this point in my life, I just want to release it. Release it. I am still physically in the same house as him. I'm in my own room. He's in his own room. And um, the only thing I'm focused on is money, making it, growing it, <laughs> literally. Because if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to get me a big ass house with just me and my kids in it. No one else. Because at the end of the day, I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm tired of the petty shit. Because even when we're, all, we're, when we're in our own rooms, he does petty shit like... I went to go look at the Netflix and he removed me from his Netflix and put guest. If he was on my Netflix, do y'all think I would have really removed him? It's fucking TV. Like I'll walk in the house and I'll go in the laundry room and my line, my, my dresser that was in his big ass room because he has the big ass room. My dresser that was in his big ass room is moved into the laundry room. Like for what? Why would you do that? Was it bothering you? We are literally roommates, like, down to the point where he buys his own food. I buy my own food. I provide my own tissue for me and my kids. He gets a big-ass thing of tissue and puts it in his room. Nope, he don't got kids in house. Um, And this is just not the way to live, y'all. Like, who wants to live like this? Who wants to be with somebody for 13 years and then walk away? I don't. And you're not going to want to do it. But if you're not happy, change your situation. Because you don't have to deal with that shit. Like, life is too short for you to have to put up with other people's shit. Like, and it's so fucked up because I still love him. It's still fucked up because even if he physically wanted to make it right, he doesn't know how to. Because of his childhood trauma. He never... He never worked that out. So even if he wanted to just come and say three simple words and actually change his behavior, he doesn't know how to do that. Honestly, at this point, I don't even think he knows how to love me properly. Because I've been adapted to like 13 years of just trying to please him. Only him. You know, I'm, I'm in this house and he has a problem with company even. He doesn't even like it when company comes over. He's disrespected my mom. He's disrespected my sister. He has no respect. Someone that walks on this earth that doesn't believe in God, that thinks they can't be touched and that they are God is very dangerous. So 
I guess if I was me and I had to give myself advice, I don't know, I would, I would tell me not, not to ignore the red flags. Red flags are put in place for a reason. And anybody that can lie about their kids can lie about anything. And try, try not to get involved with someone that has mommy issues. And once a man shows you his true colors, believe him. And just because you've been stupid for 13 years does not mean you still can't come out on top. Granted, I'm not on top, but I'm not as miserable either. And I'm not dedicating my entire life to please this one person. So it's not it for me, y'all. And, and, and honestly, I'm extremely grateful because when you have a blindfold on and you just love somebody so badly and you don't realize that it's toxic and it's not the right type of love for you, you're blind and you don't see that. But also, a lot of people don't come out of that. Like my mom, for instance, she she's still married with her her double husband, and um, she's not happy. But they still climb in the same bed together. They still live together because they're so comfortable with each other. They don't know any other way. Me, I'm not gonna be that person. I'm not going to be that person. And honestly, some people never snap out of it. But I'm grateful I did. Because now I can just make movements to get out of my situation. To find better for me and my kids. I don't want to have to ever feel like, oh my God, I need protecting. I need protection from from my kid's dad. From one of my kid's dads. From my, you know, my kids. Because we're in the same house. <sighs> And I'm on this whole healthy journey and he buys junk cookies, like a whole huge thing of candy so that they could just dig into it in one day. Oh my gosh, it's out of control. But, um, or the religion thing of not believing in God. My kids won't grow up like that. I refuse. If it's the last thing, they're not. Um... I did. I asked him to move, y'all. And he was like, no. We signed a two-year lease. I'd have just as much right as you have. And I'm like, so you would rather me move out with my four kids as opposed to you just leave by yourself? Yup. Or you can leave them. I'm not leaving my kids with you. I would never in my life do that. Where I go, my kids go. Period. And if you didn't know that by now, then you clearly don't know me. So, because he doesn't want to voluntarily leave, I got to figure out a way and I'm going to find it. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be hard. But I'm going to figure it out. If not for me, for my kids. I want to figure it out, guys. But uh, just in case, you know, there's other females out there that's that's been dumb for so long. I'm here to tell you that you can overcome that shit. You can you can definitely change your situation at any point, any time. And it's going to be scary because you're walking into the unknown. But anything is better than this. Anything is better than this, I believe so. Anyway. This is not it. Um, I guess, you know, I'm still living life and we're still on the same roof. And I'm in my room and he's in his room until at least one of us make a move, which is not going to be him. I'm sure it's going to be me. And I'm sure there's going to be more petty shit to come along. So I'll keep you guys posted. But, um, yeah, this is my journey. And this is me on my own trying to find my way. And mark my words, I will find my way.